Welcome, everybody. My name is Andres. I'm Scott. I'm Abe. And welcome to the show Between Two Stands, a show that takes a closer look at the personalities that make up the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. Today, we're really honored and we're very happy to have our special guest, our new music director, Maestro Yadar Binyamini. Welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. It's a big pleasure to be here with you. Really, the pleasure is ours. Um, so tell us, how have you been uh, occupying? Well, oh, actually, firstly, we ask the same question of every guest at the start, which is, what is on your music stand right now? And since you often have the podium, what, what scores are you uh, studying? What music are you working on? So now I'm, uh, I'm studying for a, a couple of uh, different program, operatic program. I have a couple of concerts uh, here in Italy. In Rome, I have an opera gala with, uh, with Anna Metrepko and UC Fivazov. And there's an uh, operatic gala, uh, a lot of things uh, like Verdi and Puccini, Mascagni. And uh, after this, uh, immediately after this, uh, I have uh, a Rossini gala in, uh, in Verona, at the Arena di Verona. And uh, so it's uh, two funny program, uh, programs, and uh, I can't wait to, to start uh, uh, to conduct because, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, difficult to stay at home and, uh, and study. I, I, I stopped studying uh, uh, for a couple of months because uh, without without concert to do without uh, without goal, it's so difficult for musicians to continue to study. And uh, now it's uh, I, I started to to study one month ago. I started and uh, I studied just these two programs and then uh, other two programs uh, that. Uh, we will do together in uh, in Detroit next month in, in September, and then after that uh, I will have uh, Manon Lesco in Palermo, and uh, I have already done uh, that opera, and then I I refreshing I'm refreshing uh, that. Uh, so just uh, not a lot of things, uh, but uh, I'm discovering new music for you because uh, now we we. We are just uh, not a lot of people on stage, you know, and then uh, we are, we have to, to think about this new way, this new way to make, to make music. You, you, you said it, you said it didn't sound like a lot of music, but that sounds like a lot of music to me. <laughs> that sounds like you're, uh, you're very busy. So uh, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, Yadar, I feel like, you know, you've been, you know, you've seen a lot of orchestras, you've played in a lot of orchestras, you know, as a clarinetist, you've, you've played with operas. There's so many beautiful things that can happen, but there's also a lot of things that can go wrong. And I, I love asking this of people, but I feel like with you, it'd be great uh, because you've seen so many uh, performances, been so many places. We, we just wanna know what the funniest memory that you remember happening to you or anybody on stage? <laughs> so, I remember one very funny thing during my first Madama Butterfly. I I did the uh, I I was conducting this this Madama Butterfly on a stage version, like our like our Turandot. No? But I'm about the final stage version, and uh, at one point, uh, uh, the soprano, I'm about to like, finish a phrase, and then uh, we we had uh, just I think 10, 15 bars, just orchestra, only orchestra, and then uh, after this, uh, Madame Butterfly restarts to sing, singing. You know, so she finished his her first phrase. And uh, I start, uh, I continue to conduct, uh, and she goes off. <laughs> she goes off stage, uh, and during that, and uh, I, I saw her, and uh, I, I was thinking, maybe, maybe she, 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 she needs something, or water, or she should, something, I don't know. 
but uh, when uh, she had, had to, to start again, she was uh, off stage. And then I stopped the orchestra and uh, I, uh, I see, and uh, the other, the other, the other uh, singer, Suzuki, the mezzo soprano, uh, saw me and then uh, her go, goes off uh, to, call, to call the soprano. This during, during the performance, during the concert. And uh, silence, completely silence in the, in the, in the concert hall. And we, lis we listen, hey, it's up to you. <laughs> and she, she come back on stage and continue. And it, it was uh, something like 10 seconds, but 10 seconds of like uh, 10 years. Uh, opera is so unique and how many different things can go wrong. Uh, it's yeah. great. I, I was in a pit orchestra in the Houston Grand Opera for a few years and y y not knowing what's happening on stage is often quite entertaining. It's like, wait, what, what just happened up there? <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned like not, not uh, taking a few um, months where you weren't studying music. Uh, I felt like this was with this pandemic, it was kind of just like a depressing time um, without being able to come together and perform and rehearse and do what we like to do. Uh, what did you, what were you doing, like keeping yourself uh, engaged? Did you have anything else that was happening or was it sort of just an, you know, together time, family? Yeah, in these times uh, I, I enjoyed uh, my family. I hope they enjoyed me, I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> because because it's, it was so strange uh, uh, to them to have me uh, at home uh, for all these uh, five months, uh, four months now. But uh, yeah, March, March, April in Toronto together. And then uh, May, June, and uh, yeah, five months, five months. A lot. It, it's never happened. It's never happened in, in my career, fortunately. <laughs> But uh, but it was a uh, it was good good time. I uh, I enjoyed my family. I I cooked a lot. Uh, yeah, too much. Now I'm on diet. I I, I lost uh, some some kilos, and uh, we we spend time together with with my daughter. Make music together with my son. Uh, I tried to understand something in his computer, but I can't. I couldn't. Uh, I walk. I, I go. I I went uh, by bike. Uh, yeah, around with with uh, with my wife. Uh, so boring, uh, boring time uh, for my my work, uh, but a good time for my family. And, and uh, I think uh, I'm lucky because I'm a good family and. Uh, we have a good, uh, <laughs> good atmosphere in uh, in our house, and we can stay together and uh, spend time, uh, stay very healthy in uh, in uh, our mind. No? You Absolutely. know, I, I think I think uh, everybody is not used to being inside with other people for this long. You know, I mean, you know, for, for my grandparents are 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 have been married for 65 years they are still very much in love but this is a lot of time that they've been spent i think the most time that they've ever spent together so sometimes they'll, they'll be like oh yeah your grandfather's bothering me today or you know like it, they, they, they're getting like um annoyed with each other sometimes so yeah. I, I think everyone is spending more time with each other than they've ever been used to which is good i guess <laughs> sometimes <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned cycling. Andres and I uh, like to bike around. And I don't, Abe, do you, do you go on bike rides uh, typically around? So uh, we have bikes and uh, they're still on their boxes from our move from Dallas. So we, we did get a, a stationary bike uh, when the pandemic hit just so that we would have something to do while it was still cold. But, uh, you know, Maestro, like you were saying, you know, we have a, um, my wife and I have a 16 month old son and, mm -hmm. you know, fortunately in that way, he is uh, not old enough to understand what's going on. And so it's such a 
breath of fresh air every morning. He's so excited to wake up unless his teeth hurt or something. But, um, you know, I, I can't imagine like, are, are your kids doing okay? And I mean, yeah, yeah, they are, they are going good. Uh, my, my son, uh, my son, uh, he is uh, 17, 17 years old. Uh, and, uh, but uh, he's, uh, he loves to stay at home and work, uh, work with uh, his computer, study mathematics, physics, uh, and for, to, to, to him, uh, it was okay. For my daughter, a, a little harder because uh, she, so she plays trumpet, she studies trumpet, but uh, she loves to go out, uh, to stay with friends. Uh, and uh, it was uh, so difficult uh, to her uh, understand the situation. Uh, she's 15, uh, she understood, uh, but uh, it was not easy to, to control uh, her mind. To, to, to keep the, the equilibrium, no? <laughs> it's not, not, uh, it was not, not, not easy. Well, hey, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the, you know, it's kind of an amazing story, the way that you know, Yadar became our music director. Uh, we needed a last minute replacement for Leonard Slacken for a concert and we brought Yadar in and it was um, incredible, I think, for, everybody involved um and it's I, I just think that that's such an amazing way to get it get a conductor to come in for the next <laughs> six seasons so you know we, we were wondering you know b before dso contacted you to, to replace leonard three years ago now had you heard of the dso before you know wh where was the dso on your radar you know wh what was your any impressions of us <laughs> before no, no, I, 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 I knew DSO. I have, uh, I had uh, also some recording about with uh, with uh, Yarvi, with uh, Neme Yarvi, Yarvi, and uh, I knew that it was uh, one of the historical uh, uh, orchestra uh, in, in USA, and uh, and I knew that uh, it's a, a good and important orchestra because uh, also my my agent management uh, talk uh, talk uh, to to me about about your orchestra when uh, you you had uh, some uh, tour maybe in Japan uh, with uh, with uh, the Master Slatkin and uh, I, I I knew a lot of things about uh, about uh, DSO or also about Detroit. Uh, I worked uh, a lot uh, as a play, um, uh, kind of player uh, with Maestro Ciccato and uh, Maestro Ciccato told uh, a lot of things about DSO because uh, he was uh, your music uh, director. And uh, I think, uh, I, I thought immediately uh, one, one uh, important thing about DSO when, when I met you first time that uh, I felt uh, immediately that you love uh, challenges and uh, you love uh, make uh, music uh, better and better, better and better. And uh, each day, I remember, I remember very well that, that week, uh, uh, Turandot uh, is one of my favorite uh, opera. I, I love so much Puccini and Turandot, uh, I, I, I had already conducted before the, before that time, but I remember the first day was a good, good rehearsal. The second day is much better, and the third day I remember three day three days rehearsal, and the third day in my in my mind I thought, of, wow, this is a ninety five percent that. Uh, I had in my in my brain in my mind, and uh, ninety five because it's impossible one hundred percent for me. <laughs> that's but, still uh, that's still an A. <laughs> but I re I remember I remember exactly exactly this uh, each day better and better, and uh, I asked one more thing one more thing, uh, and. Uh, I, I remember your your face uh, always with uh, with a smile and yes good one yeah yeah ask it ask it me ask it me 
and uh, it's incredible because uh, I I never worked uh, in such an atmosphere, positive atmosphere always, uh, and uh, I could uh, ask uh, each time one more detail, one more detail, and uh, you uh, I remember that uh, you love I don't know it, it seemed that you love that and uh, it, it was my my very good impression about that uh, week. And after that week, uh, I remember that uh, I asked immediately to my manager, oh, but uh, maybe they, they are looking they are looking for a, a, a new music uh, director. It's incredible, this orchestra. And uh, then uh, it, uh, it happened. <laughs> you know, Maestro, my, um, in my professional experience, I've, this is my third orchestra, and each of the three orchestras has had a music director search while I was there. And each time it's really amazing how when a conductor comes in, the kind of chemistry that can happen, especially when the conductor is exactly what the orchestra needs. And I was not there for the Turandot concert because I hadn't joined the orchestra at that point. Um, but the entire, my entire first season, everybody said, just, just wait until Yadar comes back. You know, and, I, and, and, and I was like, okay, okay, great. You know? And uh, the first rehearsal we had with you, um, last season, or this season, I guess, was um, I could tell immediately exactly what you're talking about for your turn death, that it's your, you were exactly what the orchestra needs and the orchestra responded in kind. So it's a really incredible chemistry and I know we're all looking forward to, to getting our work started. Yeah, I think I, think I, I was so lucky because uh, I, I, I was uh, in, the, in the right place in the right time, probably, you know? And, uh, it was uh, incredible. Yes, incredible chemistry. Yeah. Uh, so I can I can talk a little bit about my experience of this, which was uh, I was at the the Puccini the the turn dot, um, which was so good. It was so much fun to play. It's so nice to be led in a way that helps you play more confidently and more expressively, and that I think is something that's always uh, uh, really exciting. Um, but then I had this this fear that. Well, it's one, you know, one concert being very, very good, I think is, is, can happen often. But then if you come back, it's often, uh, you know, it goes down and it's not as good. And so I was very excited to see you then for the Mahler concert. And then it was the same and it was so uh, nice to see. It was very exciting for me. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. So one of the questions that we had for you, and I think it would be really interesting for um, our audience to hear is, what were, you, what were your impressions of, uh, of the city of Detroit when you first came to town? Oh, uh, Detroit, it, uh, now I, I, I saw something, not only the, the city, but uh, I think uh, uh, my impression was that uh, in this uh, city, culture is so important it's so important because uh, immediately everyone uh, uh, speak with me uh, yes about the soul of course but also uh, about museum about uh, opera theater about uh, art galleries uh, uh, culture is so so important and uh, uh, i had uh, also another another feeling about uh, about the Detroiters. Uh, I think uh, that uh, in Detroit uh, people is strong, strong uh, in, a, in a positive way, strong and uh, uh, so proud, proud to, to, to be Detroiters. In the, the same thing I, I I felt that uh, uh, for the DSO uh, musicians, you are so proud to be part of this, uh, of this uh, big and uh, incredible family, you know? And uh, I, I love uh, this, this feeling. Proud is so important. Uh, you, can, you can make uh, a lot of things uh, high level with, with the proud uh, to be part of a, a great team. And, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Well, well, I, I was going to say, you know, I think all of us, or at least here, and I think of many people in the orchestra, 
aren't from Detroit, uh, you know, we, we've all moved there uh, from our own places too. Uh, there are some people from Michigan, but many people have come from all over the world. So I think we've all at some point felt what you're talking about, you know, where there's that community, there's that culture that's, that you don't find in every city. So I, I, I definitely agree with you. And um, you, you mentioned something about culture in, in Detroit and, um, you know, obviously you mentioned museums and, and, and everything, but, you know, I, obviously the music and not just classical music, there's, you know, there's electronic music and, and there's, there's jazz that, that came out of, of here. And um, that kind of leads us to the next question where, you know, that's, that's, you enjoy jazz, you play jazz, um, you know, what are some of your influences and, and what, uh, who do you listen to? And, um, you know, yeah, t tell us a little bit about that part of your, your uh, life. Yeah, so I, I started, uh, uh, I love jazz. Uh, and uh, it's not true that I play jazz. Uh, I, I'd like, I'd like to play jazz, but <laughs> it's so difficult. <laughs> I have a, I have a, a classical uh, education music, but I love so much jazz. But uh, there is a reason because I started to, uh, to, to, to learn my clarinet when I was so young. I, I was nine years old. And uh, I started to play my clarinet. And uh, I remember my father, my father is not a, a musician, but is a music lover. And uh, not just classical music, but all the music, pop, popular music, uh, traditional music. Uh, uh, opera music, classical music, everything. And I remember then I, I started to, to play this clarinet uh, and uh, my, my father told me, oh, you choose the, you, you choose, uh, the, the clarinet. And so, like Benny Goodman. And uh, I was so young and uh, I asked him, uh, who is Benny Goodman? Oh, Benny Goodman. No, you have to listen to Benny Goodman. And I remember that uh, he, he gave me uh, a tape. Do you remember the tape? <laughs> no? The tape of Benny Goodman. And I remember that the first, the first uh, song was uh, "Sing, Sing, Sing." And after this, uh, he he showed me he showed me the, the the movie about Benny Goodman. I remember the King of Jazz. And it was a, a very old uh, old movie. And uh, after this, uh, I. I started to listen uh, to listen jazz music, Benny Goodman, Glenn Miller, very, very standard jazz, no? Glenn Miller. And then uh, I liked the Count Basie. And uh, then I discovered Frank Sinatra. And Frank Sinatra for me, uh, with, with Count Basie Orchestra, for me, it, to me is uh, uh, like uh, uh, a way to, to relax. To, 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 to find uh, my, my, my relaxed atmosphere. And uh, when, when, I, when I'm uh, maybe a little nervous uh, or something like that, uh, I listen to Fred Sinatra and uh, I stay calm. Maybe also before, before uh, a, a very important appointment, a very important uh, concert, uh, I listen to Fred Sinatra just uh, for maybe 30 minutes, it's enough. And, uh, and then after this, I started to, to, to listen a lot of jazz music and I liked it so much. I started to, to listen jazz music before classical music. But because after this, uh, when I was uh, 11, and, uh, yes, 11, I, I, I showed, I, I saw, sorry, I saw my first uh, opera at the theater. It was a Simon Bocanegra. They are very heavy opera for for a young young. I was I was so so young, maybe too too young for that opera. But uh, and then I started to listen uh, Verdi Overture, Rossini Overture. But before this, I started to to, to listen jazz. And uh, so it was impossible to play jazz music to me. I like it to play something. Uh, I can play something, but not really seriously like your jazz player in Detroit. I listened to the concert uh, there. So you have uh, jazz, jazz musicians incredible. They are so incredible. That's funny. I, I, I just have to say, my, my, you know, my, my grandfather gave me a, a tape of the uh, Benny Goodman um, playing in, in Carnegie Hall uh, in 1938, like very famous concert. And that was definitely inspiration for me to 
to play music. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I remember those tapes as well because you had to get a pencil when the tape would come out of the cassette and you, you'd rewind the tape in whenever it would break a little bit. You'd have to like really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing, uh, do you have a, a specific Sinatra song that like would get you in these, uh, this relaxed mood? Is there a recommendation you have for us? I have my, my favorite is uh, Fly Me to the Moon. Classic, I, classic. It's a, uh, it's so famous. Uh, all the world know, knows that that song. But uh, I have a, a, a longer track. Uh, as um, I remember, Frank Sinatra at the stands. You know, another the the, the the casino maybe uh, where 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 was uh, Frank Sinatra in that? And there is a long recording, uh, one hour and half something like that. And uh, he started uh, with the Fly Me to the Moon. And uh, the speaker told, uh, and the man is Frank Sinatra. And uh, he started to fly me to the It's <laughs> so, so funny. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. you mentioned the, uh, how, how important culture is to Detroit. And um, uh, one of the things that you had, you've done while you were here and when you were announced as music director is you made pasta. On, on the local television. You were interviewed and, and made a pasta dish. And um, it's, food is such an important part of culture, but sometimes Americans get things really, really wrong. And I believe that pasta is one of the things that we often do quite poorly. So I would like to share with you some things that I have eaten that are pasta, <laughs> but are purely American. And we're wondering uh, if you've ever seen anything like this or if you would ever eat anything like this. So I'm gonna share my screen <laughs> and show you some show examples. Me. Show me. This is called chicken parmesan. <laughs> chicken parmesan? <laughs> It looks like ramen noodles, uh, salsa, and maybe a little, how many but cheeses on top, I wonder. Is that, is that also chicken inside? I think, we think so. We don't know. <laughs> we think it's fried chicken. Yeah. Okay. So in Italy, in Italy, it doesn't exist, this, this thing. <laughs> it's impossible to find that in an Italian restaurant in Italy. <laughs> so, so would you try that or no? <laughs> No. Oh, okay, I'm going to warn you. That is the best thing you're going to see in these examples. <laughs> okay, I'm so, ready. So, Go. Example number two. This is yeah. called mac and weenie. So it's macaroni and cheese with a hot dog. <laughs> okay, but okay, it, 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 in in Italy it doesn't exist. This, but. Uh, I, I, I think I can try it. Wow, okay. wow, okay. I can taste. <laughs> do you have one more? Yeah, yeah. do, yes. do the, uh, the skyline. This. Uh, okay, okay. So that is spaghetti with chili yeah. and then a layer of cheese. Oh, a lot of cheese. It's like, it's like uh, cheese with a little spaghetti. Okay, but it it could be interesting, but for uh, to us is very strange to 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 have spaghetti and with with things together. But okay, not this, but not really this. Okay, this way. Okay, I can taste the uh, the. It often makes people not feel so good. <laughs> it... But you you have to know that uh, that uh, in in US in USA you have uh, uh, two or three things uh, that uh, in Italy it doesn't exist. But you, I think you you are thinking that uh, are Italian dishes. Maybe for example spaghetti spaghetti with meatballs. It's, 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 it is not an Italian dish. 
or a, or a pasta alfredo, you know, pasta alfredo. It is not an Italian dish. <laughs> I think Americans like to make things, take things from one culture, uh, one country, and then make it very unhealthy. I, yeah. I think that's a, that's a common thing that, that we like to do. <laughs> Just put lots of cheese and butter on it. Yeah, except, or, or, or a pizza. Yes, pizza is an Italian dish, but pizza with pineapple. I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like it, but I know it's not Italian. <laughs> do, you, do you like pizza with pineapple, Scott? I, I do, I think it tastes good, but uh, it's, it, it, I, don't, I don't pretend to think that I'm eating an Italian dish. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> you're not getting on his good side. I understand. <laughs> um, so, so before we move on, I, I really did want to ask you. Um, you know, we talked about your favorite things about Detroit, but tell us a little bit about um, you know Italy, where you're from, and like you know, where, where is your favorite place to vacation in Italy? Where, where do you think is the most beautiful place in Italy, and or, or in uh, Europe in general? I I love. Uh... Generally, generally, I love uh, the sea. I, I love the sea. And uh, in Italy, we have a lot of very good place in Tuscany, in Sicily, in Sardinia. And uh, I love also sometimes uh, not really vacation, but just to relax me and my family or my wife uh, to, to go maybe in the, where is the, the hill? No, the hill uh, uh, in Emilia Romagna we have uh, near Bologna or something like that. Very good food, uh, relax, uh, relaxing area, and uh, just this. But uh, I'm not. I have to, to to be honest. I'm not used to 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 go for vacation uh, in Italy. Uh, maybe maybe some days, but not. Uh, Long vacation, long vacation, I, I like to go uh, far, <laughs> so far. <laughs> to Detroit, Where? to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I love, I love a lot of, uh, no, in, in Italy, I, I have uh, a lot of friends in a different, different country, in a different uh, region. Uh, to, Tuscany, Tuscany is uh, maybe, maybe my favorite uh, region because uh, there's a very good food. I love so much the meat, carne alla fiorentina, bistecca alla fiorentina. I love so much. And uh, in Sicily, I I I go uh, usually once per year to to work, and uh, I, usually I I bring with me my my wife uh, and sometimes also my my children and uh, stay to the beach uh, near Palermo. There is a lot of good good, good places. You know, um, uh, my wife and I just got married in, in almost a year ago, and we went for our honeymoon, La Luna de Miele, at, uh, in, in, in Italy. And it was amazing. We had an incredible time. Um, but, I, and this was in September. About a week ago, I got a ticket, uh, a, a speeding ticket sent to me in the mail that was like a lot. It was like 200 euro. For, because I was going too fast in a car. Um, yeah, it was, it, it, they're pretty, it's pretty bad over there, Yadder. What's up with that? <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> it's, it's not that bad here in the States. <laughs> they found me in Detroit. <laughs> really? Yeah. So uh, wow. just watch out there. <laughs> Don't go fast over there. I thought, for all, no. all, all those Italian cars go so fast, but, uh, you know, I guess you, you get charged. Like, we are, uh, we we drive uh, maybe maybe faster than you because I remember in, in USA in USA you you are so calm my car in Italy we are we are not so so calm <laughs> we 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 go a lot I like I like to go not really really slow but when when I just when I'm alone on on my car but with with my family I, I go I go slower. <laughs> Do you uh, follow any of the uh, the racing, the professional racing at all, or are there any sports that you that you follow? No, I was uh, young. I I liked the I liked the Formula One. 
but when I was so young, I remember Ayrton Senna, I remember uh, Alan Prost. I remember that, uh, no, no, but uh, not now. But it's the same uh, also with, uh, with the soccer. When I was uh, young, uh, I followed a lot of soccer. I, I, I remember Juventus, uh, all, the, all, the, all the, the players. But now I, 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 completely, I completely forgot uh, this, uh, this thing. Well, uh, we, so thank you for, you know, we're asking you a lot of questions. We figured maybe we'll take the spotlight off you for a sec. And, uh, you know, we, we play instruments. I play percussion, horn, cello, or, or respectively. But um, we, we, we actually do a little conducting ourselves. Um, and, and we wanted to ask you if you could guess who we were impersonating as a conductor. So. Uh -oh. So Scott's going to show you and tell us, tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah. So we have some very serious influences on this. We'll, we'll, we'll share, we'll share. Well, first we'll start, we'll start with Andres. But do I have to understand just the conductor or also the piece? You will hear the music as well. Excellent, excellent job, Andres. Okay, we say sorry and do the man. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's great. I get a job. I get the job. <laughs> okay, now I have one, and this is a this is an older uh, from a, from a previous generation. I don't, I don't I don't know I don't know who he is that that was uh Fert Bongler and doing doing Wagner so he had this nickname of being the rag doll because he <laughs> <laughs> Yeah but too fat <laughs> Scott can't control that <laughs> For Wagner is not, was not fat <laughs> Okay, next one. Next one. Ah, all right. Next we'll have Abe. That is awesome. Okay, Gerd, Gerd, Maler, one. Oh, interesting. I, I was trying to do Eschenbach. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Because yeah, we, I, I, I thought Gerd, Gerd, because you did this. Yeah, I, I, that was just a, a, an experience I had one time with him. And we were in, in school, he came and did Mahler one. And the first rehearsal, he just started. <laughs> yeah, when, when I conducted for, uh, uh, Mother first, uh, my, my attack was the was this. The same. <laughs> I feel like there's no other way to start it in a lot of ways, right? But the, 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 the reason is that we don't need the, the, the attack together, no? Okay, go when you want. <laughs> okay, yes, you're back. It's go, good. Correct. Okay, next. Maybe. We can do one more of these. Another old time, old time conductor. This is me again. I'll try this one. Oh, white jacket. Oh yes. Oh, the puppy. Not bad, Jester. Not bad. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so Thiel, but I, I don't know, or, or, uh, or Strauss or Mazel. Strauss, it was Strauss, it was Richard Strauss when he was conducting his own piece. It's just so. I, I, I imagine the Strauss, but it could, it could be Mazel too, because the, the same expression. <laughs> It, it looks like he's very, he doesn't care. He's like sl yeah. almost sleeping. <laughs> I think one of my favorite. A lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> I think one of my favorite videos of Strauss is, I, there's one where he's conducting just like that and checks his pocket watch to see what time it is. <laughs> you know, for, for such beautiful music, it just looks like he doesn't care at all. It's, it's a, it does, doesn't go together, you know? <laughs> Yes, incredible, incredible. And, and the same thing also for Stravinsky. Have you never seen the Stravinsky? <laughs> yeah, exactly, this way. <laughs> but it, it, it's incredible, it's incredible. Most exciting music, but, but not in his face. Yeah, exactly. I remember being so excited uh, as, a, as a young student in a record store <laughs> when, they, when they existed um, that I saw these recordings of Stravinsky conducts Stravinsky, and I thought, oh, that must be wonderful. And then I saw the video. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not so exciting. <laughs> so along those lines, um, we're wondering, since you were a player uh, before you started conducting, were there any things that informed how you would conduct based on your experience as a clarinet player like did you know did you have any red flags like what to do or what not to do based on what you had seen uh, so uh as a conductor as a conductor i i i don't like uh, I don't like uh, to see a musician with uh, with crossed with, with cross legs, no. D during rehearsal, in, in this way, you know, in, in, uh, with with the cross cross uh, legs, is a, a very <laughs> not good because because I I'm uh, I'm thinking oh maybe I'm a very boring man. <laughs> this is not the uh, and. Uh, that I think that I think that uh, I don't like when uh, when someone uh, exaggerates in in in, uh, in doing what what I I ask it, no maybe I, maybe I don't know maybe brass section when I ask it, when when I ask it, oh maybe it's a, a, a little a little uh, too loud could you play just a little less and then play from a forte pianissimo. Or, or could you play just a little more? And they play from pianissimo, fortissimo, no? And, uh, but why? Or, or uh, maybe percussion, that uh, percussion, please, you are a, li a little late. Uh, and then the next day rush. <laughs> and then I, I, don't, I don't like so much this. <laughs> we, we will try not to do that. We will try not to do that ever. I'm glad, I'm glad we're hearing this. No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> And maybe in five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, so we we kind of had some that we we have you know that we seen especially during this time we saw many conductors and so you know and we each play in different sections uh, brass percussion strings so we we kind of came up with some some red flags that we had too uh, for, for for conductors. Right. These are some of the uh, some of the errors that we think some of the other conductors we saw that we weren't as interested in. We would see them them make, and it would d discourage us, get in the way of the music making. We're very happy to have you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, start, I, I, us, start us off, I, Scott. When when I when I was a clarinet player, uh, there there was a, there was a something. Fun things uh, that I didn't like uh, uh, of uh, of conductors, uh, but not uh, really music things. Uh, uh, I I didn't like uh, to to see or or a conductor that speaks too much. You no, know? maybe okay, play play maybe two or three bars and then stop it 
and blah 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 blah. And I re I remember I remember that I, I put my my clarinet and okay, okay, wait, wait. You, the, so you crossed your you crossed your arms. You 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 did what you don't. The arms, but but not not the legs. <laughs> and the other things, I I remember that uh, I I I didn't like. Uh, Conductors that fix the, the air D during <laughs> it's, it's so bad. I don't know why, but I didn't like it. They just need a mirror, you know, just like you know. Exactly. <laughs> it's in, it's enough just to, to put the 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 gel air. No, it's enough. <laughs> um, there's a good story uh, that our, our my colleague. Mark Abbott tells about a conductor, a former music director from, from years ago of Detroit when they're doing the overture to Weber's Oberon. Starts with the horn solo, he was playing principal. And the, the prep for the opening solo was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mark, being Mark, had his horn and just goes, <laughs> and then put it back up and played. <laughs> well, Abe, do you want to do you want to say uh, what, what your red flags are? Um, the the thing that really um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a red flag, but I think it's a little unnecessary. Is you know there's a very fine line between a death stare and making sure you know everybody is okay. So in a performance, you know, things, it's a performance. So some things go wrong. And sometimes a conductor will sort of just look up and just make sure everybody's okay. And then other times you get a conductor that just goes, you know, and <laughs> for me, I think that's a little unnecessary, um, but, you know. Yeah, but sometimes I, I have to tell, yeah, uh, me, uh, me too. I, I, I don't like to do that because, uh, is a really uncomfortable for, for the player, no? Right. But maybe, maybe, maybe sometimes is a not. A, it's a very, very instinctive reaction. I, maybe, maybe I don't know. But it, it, it actually it is not a really comfortable for for the player, no? Because okay, <laughs> I did a mistake. I know. Please go on. <laughs> or you don't know if they're looking at you or the person behind you. You're like, me, or, you know, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, so mine, for example, you know, percussion's a, a, a funny instrument. I mean, it's, it's loud. So like something that I, I think of is, you know, let's say you have a big cymbal note or, or a big roll or, or whatever, you know, solo, obviously. And, you know, the conductors, like, you know, it'd be nice if it was just like they're conducting and then they, look at you for that or point you know but like it's a little scary when you're about to play and the conductor is just like <laughs> and i'm like oh, i hope this is okay you know and you <laughs> you play it and um hopefully it's right sometimes it's not uh but um yeah that's just that's just as a percussionist it's always like it would be good to have some eye you do that amazingly by the way you you always give eye contact and and communicate very well but some people, you know, there's no communication. And it's like, I hope this is okay. We're, we're going to find out. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Stay away to heaven. I have, oh, I have one more story I can tell. And, and I used to play uh, when I was in school for the former principal cellist of the Philadelphia Orchestra, who had retired at that point. And he told this amazing story about, uh, I forget what solo he was playing, uh, but he was playing a solo and the conductor was stopping and coaching him on how he wanted to play the solo to go. And eventually he just said, you know, Maestro, why don't you just show me how you want it to, you know, and just, just held up his instrument to him. And then Maestro <laughs> said, oh, it's okay. I, I won't play it for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that could be dangerous. What if he, what if he played it and really well? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> what's, what's yours, Scott? Oh, um, you know, there were a couple things. Uh, after playing in an opera orchestra, 
uh, we often had these, these pickup beats. You know, you, with horn, you have to breathe and play. And if there's this separation between the breath and the playing where it's <gasps> <coughs> then uh, <laughs> it, it can be really disruptive, uh, especially if it's a soft entrance. But in opera, you have to wait for the singers. So there's a lot of <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, it happens. Uh, singers, <laughs> if, if they walk off stage, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a long break. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember when I, when I played when I was so young. I played in, in the wind band uh, in a concert. Uh, I had uh, uh, a conductor that uh, his uh, his attack was. Uh, one, two, three, four, and go. <laughs> so it was like five. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready. Um, should, we, uh, should we ask the student questions? Uh, I think now's a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we submitted a, a few questions that the students had asked in advance. And uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, these, these stood out to us and we wanted to run them by you as, as our new music director. Um, the first one is from Alex uh, Schwart or Schwarta. I'm not exactly sure if it's a German pronunciation. Or... Alex, Alex S. Alex S. Thank you for submitting your question. And it is, how do you stand out in an audition while still adhering to the proper musical traditions? Okay. So, uh, I think it's, uh, it's so important. Uh, it's so important to make always music, not, uh, not only technique. Technique is, is important, uh, but, uh, we we have to go through the technique uh, arrive uh, to make music and uh, uh, always uh, follow the phrase uh, and i i remember i remember when when i in my past when i teach the uh, clarinet uh, i i remember this uh, this thing i i taught i taught to my to my to my student uh, Follow the phrase and imagine to sing with your uh, instrument. It's much, it's uh, it's easier, no? Because uh, sometimes uh, we are we are uh, focusing uh, just for the technique, the sound, the intonation, uh, and uh, maybe I can do technically perfectly perfect, but you you are you are not making the, the music, and I need the uh, emotion. And uh, sometimes technique is important for uh, if if you have uh, the same instrument and I'm in the, in the committee is is important to me, but maybe conductors uh, uh, okay for for the technique I ask it to 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 the the, the specialist, but uh, for the music uh, I have to 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 feel something, and it's so important to make music not not only technique but make music make the phrase, breathe, uh, and uh, the, the breath is, is part of the music. I think, I think that's also like such a common uh, feeling at auditions where it's like, well, okay, I heard that it was executed well, but why? The, you need, we need that, that feeling behind it. And it's, it's great to hear that. Yeah, um, yeah, th so, this might be along the same lines, Yadir, so, you know, uh, maybe a similar answer, but uh, Parker Olson uh, submitted a question that said, what are the three most important things you listen to behind a screen in an audition? And do you listen to anything different in the finals or are they the same? So, uh, to me, the three most important things uh, are sounds quality and uh, musicality. The, the, the musicality like uh, musical charisma okay and uh, so of course intonation this is the three but not not uh, in this order the, the, the same the same level of uh, importance 
uh, it's so important to, to have a musician in the orchestra, technically good, but with a good charisma and uh, musical charisma. And uh, so important the intonation to, 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 play, to play together. And uh, in, the, in, the final, uh, in the final, I think uh, maybe especially for the principals, I think uh, I pay more attention to the music charisma because uh, maybe the, the other things uh, we we already checked the, in the in the before before that and the, in the final I I pay my attention about music charisma uh, often uh, asking uh, asking something uh, to 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 the the, the the player maybe please uh, you can uh, could you do maybe more uh, expressive, um, or more accent, uh, softly uh, change your sound, try to change your sound. Uh, and uh, flexibility is so important, uh, but flexibility is like uh, musically. I, I think some people, you know, when, when people ask them to do something differently, it's almost like, oh, they don't like me, they don't like me, but it's nice to hear that you know, if, if someone asks you to do something different, it, it's to see if you're able to change, if you, if, you're, if you can adapt well, which I think is something that's important. It, it's not that they don't, it's not that you don't like the way they're playing, you just wanna see if they can do it differently, you know, just in case, which is, I, I think, a good thing to know. Uh, in, in my opinion, is not, is not, <laughs> maybe it's not always in this, in this way, but in my opinion, in, during the audition, you have to take some risk. You have to take some risk and uh, uh, to show your uh, skill ceiling. No, you have to show that. Uh, and uh, okay, take some risk, maybe to do some mistake. But uh, uh, is is so important uh, to make music and uh, maybe make a little mistake uh, is more important that than uh, than play. All the all the, the part correctly, but uh, no emotion, uh, no nothing, no music. Uh, I I need this, especially for the, for the principals, but not just for the people. Um, yeah. In talking about music charisma, do you find that like the different composers have a different character that you'd like to hear change throughout the audition? So Ravel and Mahler, should they have these differences, or is it same throughout? Yeah, yeah, it's important. It's important to to know uh, the difference. Uh, but I think uh, if you are a, a smart, a smart musician, you can uh, you can uh, learn. And uh, maybe you don't know you you've never played played may, maybe a modern symphony or a Strauss poem. But uh, if you are a smart musician, I can ask you, and you can learn and understand. Uh, I I. I remember a lot of a lot of no, it's not correct a lot, but some some musicians during during the audition that never they are never played uh, a piece of music or a composer, and then and I ask I ask them uh, please uh, change. You are you are playing you are playing this piece uh, like uh, another composer, and you are playing Mozart and, and, and not Ravel. Please try a way. And I explain you maybe more, uh, not a lot of nuance, please a little less here and gently here the, the piano is really piano, it's not mezzo forte. And during the audition, because it's during the final of the audition, uh, of course, and uh, it's important that, that I understand if the, the, the musician is smart, uh, or he has a good, good, uh, good energy, music charisma, this is so important. Should we move on to the next question? Okay. Um, so this is from Victoria Chung. And the question is, what are some challenges conductors face when working with orchestras? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, we have, uh, as a conductor, I, I have uh, always uh, a very very big challenge uh, with uh, all the new orchestras uh, that uh, I, I meet 
is uh, to to understand uh, how much the orchestra can give me and uh, to have uh, the the orchestra's trust no i i, I need to con concur the orchestra and these two two things uh, i have to do in the first 10 minutes <laughs> you know <laughs> you know better than me maybe <laughs> it's true like for, for first impression right it's the first impression yeah you get. You have to con to concur the orchestra with your skill with your charisma and uh, you have to ask uh, a lot of things but uh, try the right way to ask them and uh, to understand if you can ask uh, because because sometimes you you can ask uh, something to to someone but it's better don't ask nothing to, to other <laughs> or or uh, understand that is not the moment uh, is not the right moment now to ask wait maybe in the break uh, maybe later uh, and uh, it's not easy each each time with a new orchestra we have this challenge and, and it's very it's it's very difficult to understand because each orchestra uh, is uh, is different from uh, than the other. It's not not easy. Well, that makes a lot of sense, especially when musicians are uh, are not always inclined to love the conductor. <laughs> it can be it can be a challenge to overcome that. I can I can imagine. But I think that was that was a great answer. Do you want to move on to the next question? Are we good? If you could, this is a really important one, very close to my heart. If you okay. could drink with any section of the orchestra, which one would you choose and why? That's from Parker Olson. <laughs> well, it's a very important question, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, think, uh, I think we have to, to do uh, some differences because, uh, I like I like uh, beer, and uh, I like uh, champagne, and uh, I think uh, drink a beer. I think is better with the percussion and brass section because you are uh, a little. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that the the word the correct. We under we understand we understand. <laughs> okay, with with the percussion and brass, we can we can drink beer, and to to drink uh, champagne, I think uh, is maybe more interesting with with the string section. That's a <laughs> good, that's a good answer. Yeah, we, we, anytime you want to do that, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might join you guys for a beer, though. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Go oh, I, I just think that's really funny, just get, like how the different uh, instruments kind of have, lend themselves to certain characters. And maybe that's where we sit. We are, the brass is further away from the, uh, the podium and the strings are maybe on... Uh, <laughs> on edge a little bit more, but <laughs> I think that's great. So, so the, uh, yeah, I guess we, we um, came up with this kind of funny concept of, um, if you were to, you, you, you played many operas, Yadda, Yadda, you, you, you conducted many operas, you've seen many characters, you, you, you know, you're getting to know us a little bit more, but if you could cast the three of us, and if you want to include yourself in it, what would be our operatic roles? What do you see us singing? Uh, you know, minus the voice. <laughs> so I think, uh, uh, do you remember Turandot? Okay, do you remember Ping Pong Pang? <laughs> That's the perfect answer. <laughs> I think I think uh, is perfect for you. Ping pong pong. 
that's gonna that's gonna be our new uh, our new names here, ping pong pan. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, it's a it's a very very funny role, funny role, but uh, they they have to be very precise uh, also. And uh, I think it's the same because you are funny during during your show, but I think you are so precise for the preparation. If you were to play any opera character and, and want to emulate any character from any of these famous operas, what would you like for yourself? Oh, for myself. <laughs> uh, for myself, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe Gianni Schicchi. Do, 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 you know, do, you know, do you know the opera? Yes. But I yeah. to, 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 to be Gianni Schicchi, because Gianni Schicchi, it, it, it doesn't sing in the opera. Stay, stay on the on the bed, and he's died. <laughs> he's died, and uh, but it's a good place to follow the opera and to to, to listen to the, the singer. <laughs> and maybe take a, and maybe take a nap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's also a bit of a trickster. Nani <laughs> Kiki, he's tricky. He's smarter than everybody else in the opera. Exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, Scott, do you want to uh, explain the uh, DMD game? Okay, so this is one of my favorite games uh, because it always uh, seems to um, <laughs> provide a lot of uh, fodder for conversation and, and it gets people uh, uh, engaged and, and it's a ranking game and it's called Date, Marry, Divorce. And so, um, we have the, it's all about music. It's, we're gonna talk about composers and pieces and the comp we're ranking them. When you date someone, it's, this is nice, you know, maybe not permanent, but you know, it's nice for now. Mary, I want this forever and divorce, let's get rid of it completely. <laughs> it, it, it's, oh. it's sometimes known as a different game, I guess, but I, we, we made it good for this family wholesome show yeah and it's also a great game because this is something that we that at least i did uh i played this game a lot in summer festivals with my friends and since we're all apart from each other and all the students are apart from each other and don't have the opportunity we thought it'd be fun to see what your answers might be so <laughs> the first the first category we're going to start with composers and um being an italian opera conductor um we wanted to start there so date mary divorce between verdi puccini and rossini oh wow so difficult this <laughs> ah, wow i think uh, in the order we okay mm, date uh, uh Date Puccini, Mary Verdi, uh, yeah, divorce Rossini, but it's not it's not really true because it's maybe maybe second the second date. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, hey, it, these are all hard. It, you know, it's it's not going to be easy because they're all good good uh, composers and pieces. So exactly. you know, you you just gotta choose. You gotta choose. You know, that's what makes it hard. Yeah, this, uh, this next one is, is my favorite uh, to debate with, with my friends. Uh, so Bach, Beethoven, Brahms. Okay, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms. Uh, Mary, Beethoven, uh, date, Brahms, and uh, divorce, Bach. So you like the big works. You've told us this before, you know, we've done Berlioz, Symphony Fantastique, Mahler for Puccini. Um, is that part of why Bach is further down? I like to have, to have uh, a lot of people on stage. I, 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 I'm, I, I, feel, I feel so comfortable with, with a lot of people. And uh, so, and the, uh, and, uh, you have to think that uh, I was a clarinet player, and uh, with Bach is so so <laughs> so far, no. That's funny because I often answer these questions differently. If I'm thinking about, am I listening to the music or am I performing the music? So, uh, like 
the first one, I think I would agree with you that uh, Verdi, Puccini, Rossini, um, but if I were performing, because Verdi's horn parts are often upbeats, it's not as exciting, except for Don Carlos, it's beautiful. But um, uh, then it would be Puccini, Rossini, Verdi. And it's just, uh, just funny how that works, but yeah. Uh, that's the beauty of that's the beauty of it it's like you, you can't get too into it you just got it's the, the yeah. more you think about it the harder it the harder it is um okay so uh moving on mozart mendelssohn Mahler. so Ma mary is Mahler. <laughs> yeah uh, uh date uh mozart <laughs> it's so difficult this Okay, dates Mozart and uh, divorce Mendelssohn, but it is not, it's not really true because because I love Mendelssohn too. <laughs> but for sure, for sure, married mother. <laughs> I think we could all agree on that one. <laughs> Maybe not, Abe. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably would do a, a Mendelssohn Mozart Mahler for me, but I still love to perform Mahler and I love listening to it, but so it's not really true. <laughs> oh, I completely agree with the maestro on this one. It would be Mahler, Mozart, Mendelssohn. Just Mahler's so great for us horn players, and then Mozart is, uh, you know, Mozart. <laughs> Mozart, Mozart for horn player is, is uh, incredible. Not uh, a few notes, but very difficult. <laughs> uh, depending on the symphony, yeah. Mozart, uh, twenty nine and uh, twenty five. It's <laughs> and I'll tell you what, percussionists love Mozart. I love Mozart. I love to listen to Mozart and I love to play Mozart because it means we get a little vacation. Wow. <laughs> so anytime you want to do Mozart, I support it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So our next, our next group, these are still composers and uh, we, we're moving a, a little bit further on. These are all big composers. We have Respighi. Prokofiev and Strauss. Ah, okay. Uh, Mary Strauss. Uh, date Respighi and divorce Prokofiev. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. I would definitely marry Strauss in that one as well, but I think I might have the other two slightly different. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, Scott. It's so <laughs> difficult to choose. <laughs> Should we skip down to pieces a little bit? Like skip, to, like maybe, um, maybe uh, do. Uh, I, I know you wanted to do the Beethoven one, um, like Beethoven's Third Symphony, Seventh Symphony, or Ninth Symphony. Three, seven, nine. Oh, um, Mary third three, Mary third three. So difficult, too difficult this because I I love. To... <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard. Yes, <laughs> I think uh, I think I I can I can have three girlfriends. <laughs> that would that that would be amazing. <laughs> okay okay that's fair we can give you one <laughs> where they're all they're all okay <laughs> that's a difficult one for me too because it's always well which movement uh because the fourth movement of nine is so amazing but then the yeah. second movement of seven and just ah, can't can't decide so i understand um we'll move on to Mahler. uh and his symphonies between Mahler seven, six, and four. Seven, six, and four. Ah. Uh, I think Mary married four, date seven, and uh, divorce six. <laughs> okay. I, I, that's that's good. You know, uh, I, I, so so the last few that we've done are like pieces that are good composers that are really good. 
Uh, we, we did want to save, save one where we, we came up with our least favorite pieces between the three of us. So um, we want to see, it's, it's going to be hard because it might be the opposite, but um, what are, what would you do with uh, Franck D minor, Bruckner's third symphony and Elgar's first symphony? Maybe if you could say divorce them all if you want. <laughs> I think I think we can do three three divorce. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good, that's the best answer I think. Maybe maybe I can. Maybe just uh, Frank. May, maybe, but uh, as a as a date, not more than these. <laughs> That's fair. Maybe maybe we should do one opera, uh, an opera one of these. Do you want to do the should we do the Strauss? Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Uh, so for Strauss, we said uh, Der Rosenkavalier, Salome, and Ariadne of Naxos. Oh, okay. In this order. No. Oh, okay. Perfect. Married. Married. Uh, yeah, Rosenkavalier, uh, Salome and uh, Ariana. Fair enough. Good. <laughs> well, uh, awesome, Yadda. Yo, so this has been awesome. So we wanted to wrap up, first of all. Um, so there's a, there's a very famous drink in Detroit uh, that was invented in Detroit called The Last Word. And um, it's delicious. You should, you should have it. Maybe we'll all, we'll all have it together. But um, we wanted to kind of wrap this up uh, and, and with the last word. Um, actually, Scott, what is, in, what is in the last word? Do you remember what, what the ingredients are? Oh, I know that it has, uh, I think it's gin, chartreuse, um, luxardo, uh, maraschino um, liqueur, and lime juice. So a lot of lime juice, I believe. Uh, it's, it's delicious. We'll it's have really make, good. Yeah. Yes. But, um, but like Andres was saying, we cannot thank you enough. You've been a terrific sport playing these ridiculous games. <laughs> and yeah. uh, thank and, you very much. Uh, yeah. And we just wanted to give you a chance to, before we do the final thank yous of the, of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra Summer Institute, we wanted to give you a chance to say like what you're most looking forward to and, uh, and um, anything else that you might want to add, give you the last word. I, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, understand that because it is stopping your, 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 uh, your oh. video. Oh, I was just saying, uh, we wanted to ask what you're most looking forward to and give you that chance to have the last word before we say our final goodbyes. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So it was a very, uh, a big pleasure to, to be with you and see you because, because, uh, Stay, stay at home uh, with, with uh, such a, a, a big orchestra like you is uh, it's very sad, very sad. And uh, I have to tell uh, that uh, I, I can't wait to work uh, together and uh, to make, uh, to make uh, not just uh, the, the, the the classical music, but uh, I'd like to do in Detroit uh, a big mix uh, with uh, with DSO, with the uh, opera theater, with jazz music. Uh, I my dream is uh, to to make uh, a big connection and uh, for all the, the the city. This is my my dream, and uh, I hope uh, I hope uh, in the future to to go. In this uh, in this way, and uh, so for your students, uh, for your students, uh, enjoy the music and remember, make the music and not just the notes. Okay, <laughs> make the music and sing with your instruments. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much, Yadder. That was that was awesome. Yeah, that's really good advice. We we can't wait to make music with you soon too. Thank you. So lastly, I think that all we have to say now is a huge, huge shout out to our colleagues, uh, Joanna Yarbrough and Hannah Hamill, 
for running this festival and making sure everything happened and we could actually connect with the students that we connected with. It's really, it's really been uh, fantastic and it would have been impossible without the hours and hours and hours that they put in to making this work. Um, we'd also like to thank the DSO staff who, uh, who supported this whole uh, project uh, as it went on. It ended up being, uh, I think, much more effective and much, um, much better received than we could have ever imagined because of these people. Uh, uh, Kevin Brown and Ralph Schiano also contributed quite a bit to the, all the technological sides of things and, and support throughout. And, uh, and lastly, our maestro, Maestro Binimini, for joining us in some of this ridiculousness and sharing your, your insights and your thoughts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wraps up yet another episode of Between Two Stands. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Stands. If you have any questions for us or for our guests, please email us at betweentwostands at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to tune in to this week's watch parties. Thank you and see you next time. <laughs>